Guys, what's up? It's John, Games 31. I'm here at the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo. I'm here with my friends, Terry, Dan Diebold. Uh, how are you guys doing? Pretty good. Awesome. Okay, so we're talking about the PlayStation Prototype. You guys are the owners of the PlayStation Prototype. This is a really cool system, obviously. A lot of history behind it. Uh, Terry, tell us a little bit, like, how did you come across it? Well, when my company I worked for, Havana Corporation, went bankrupt, uh, what we did, we went around to uh, a lot of the buildings, just took pictures and made itemized lifts. They were going to do an online auction. And if you wanted to get in involved in an online auction, you had to get a paddle and sit out in the audience like everybody else. And that's, you know, basically, accidentally, I bought it in the auction. I was bidding on, like, cups, plates, and saucers from the boardroom. A lot of, you know, you got eight board members, you buy, like, enough for ten. And you buy, like, two or three of each. That way, if one breaks, you got to just throw another one in front of the guy because everything's got to be the same, you know, with board members. So... How, a, how long ago was this? Like how long? Uh, 2009. Yeah, and uh, the stuff I was bidding on, it showed up on screen. It was like three docking safe boxes with the lids open. The bidding started 25. I said 50. Went to 65. I said 75. The bidding stopped. I'm like, I thought I was going to get in a bidding war, but people probably thought I was nuts bidding that much money on three boxes. But they didn't read the fine print. Uh, yeah, plates, cups, and saucers. Uh, yeah. Plates, cups, and saucers. Okay. That's yeah. What, that's what the actual boxes said. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or the cases yeah. said. Wow. Yeah. So uh, they didn't read the fine print on actually how many more boxes there were in the lot. So when I won the bid, I went back and saw the auctioneers, and they took me to my lot, and I was like, dude, you sure? And they're like, yeah, why? I said, there's no writing with my name or initials on it. I don't know what's in these other boxes. So what they probably did was just instead of making more lots, they just created bigger lots to get it over with faster. It took me two car loads to get all this stuff home. So anything that I had uh, filled out with, I just pulled aside. Anything that didn't have any writing on, I started opening it. One had like four plaques. One's got Olaf Olison's name, who was the president of Sony back in the day. He was a board member at Havana. That's how I got this. Uh, one had like shoes and ties that belonged to him, some silk ties and stuff. Another one had like 250, 300 music CDs in it. A lot of them still wrapped in cellophane. Uh, another one had um, probably around 40 games, some PlayStation, some 3D, 3DO, whatever you want to call it. It's, a lot of them were still wrapped in the cellophane. And another one, when they opened it up, it had the uh, prototype in it, along with the BIOS card and the controller. And I saw it, I was like, well, this is cool. That's all I said to myself, this is cool. But you had no idea at the time what no, you... No, no, it uh, all came up to my son. Okay, so Dan, you, you, when you first saw it, like, what was your reaction? Uh, this doesn't look like any PlayStation I've ever seen before. Yeah, if you guys look at it, the, the, the controller is like, it's a Super Nintendo controller with the PlayStation yeah. People logo on People give me so much crap online because like when I first posted a YouTube video, I was like, well, it looks like a Super Nintendo controller. These people were like, what, this dude doesn't know what a Super Nintendo controller looks like? I never had one growing up. I had the NES. That's pretty much the only system I never had was Super Nintendo. Right. So like people were giving me a bunch of crap, but like, yeah, I was like, man, this is really weird. Like, obviously, like I was telling people for years, like I, I have a Nintendo PlayStation at my house. They're like. Oh, okay, cool. Like, whatever. Yeah, like, just friends. That polite. So now you have a dish store, right, with all the dishes you got? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I that's, a, that's, that's where the real money is at, right? Yeah. Let's be honest, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, that's cool. So uh, you obviously discovered what it was. Yeah. Um, it, I know it's probably hard to put a value on it because it's like a one of a kind. There's really not. Right. And so I guess, I mean, do you guys have any idea? Do you guys even like to share what, how much you guys think it's worth? The well, highest offer we had was 200000 Wow. cash. Two hundred thousand dollars cash. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That was in Hong Kong. Back in 2015, before Ben Heck did all his magic. Okay, so explain what Ben did with the system. Uh, if they watch episodes 246, 247, and 265, uh, Ben will show them and tell them everything he's done. But basically, uh, we could always play games on this thing. It's not region locked, so you could play American and Japanese games on it. Uh, it didn't have sound. So when Ben took it apart along with my son in uh, the first video. Uh, he actually found three bad capacitors. So he replaced them, took one of the bodge wires off, and the next thing you know, the CD portion started open, closing, spinning. Oh, he put the bodge wire back. I thought he had left that no, one off. See, what happened was, we were trying to figure out what was wrong with it, and we were getting nowhere, and then I was like, you know what, Ben, just take off one of those bodge wires on the bottom of the board and see what happens. And he was like, all right. So he took it off, and it brought a little bit of life back to the drive. Like, it was spinning, but very slowly. And then he's sitting there looking at it like, wow, that actually did something. Like, what, what, what could be wrong with this thing? And then he noticed there was three bad capacitors. He replaced uh, them. Okay. And it worked great. Put the wire back on. Still worked exactly the same. 
And then uh, a couple months later, he replaced the drive on it. So there's actually a disk drive from an old Sony boombox in there right, right now. Now, now, people are actually making, like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's people making games for it, right? There's like... Yeah. Super so, yeah. Garden. Okay. That's one of the homebrews, and it's pretty good. You can download this online to play it. Where can you find online to play it? Like what? Dan, if you just go to Google and type in Super Boss Gaiden, it's uh, first link, it'll bring you to a web page with just like a JPEG on it, but if you click the JPEG, it'll download a zip file with the Super Nintendo ROM, and it also has an image file that's formatted for the Nintendo PlayStation. Wow, that's a really cool cool story. Anything else you guys want to add? Uh, no? no? No, okay. <laughs> You're going to love this one. I got an email about two weeks ago, and it's funny, I'm going to Monaco, Carlo, uh, Monte Carlo, France for a day. Wow. February 18th. It's okay. called Magic. So you're going to invite me and we're going to go together, sure. right? Sure. You can, you know, you okay, can let's, do let's do this. Let's go. I don't know let's how go. your wife's going to think it. about that. <laughs> no, no, seriously, guys, you're good friends. Uh, I'm glad you guys were at Game On Expo this yeah, past year. Uh, let's make it happen again in the future. I know no you guys problem. are booked this year, but maybe uh, 2018. Yeah, that have you guys good. come back out to Game On. Uh, you guys are awesome. The system's cool. You guys are even cooler, honestly, guys. So uh, keep it up. Uh, appreciate hanging out with you guys, all right? Uh, you too, John. Cheers. Pleasure.